We're in the collections at the museum where we house the dinosaurs and other fossils. We have some of Canada's oldest natural history material housed in this building, including Canada's uh, oldest dinosaurs. We focus mainly on Canadian material here. Uh, as far as the dinosaur material is concerned, most of the dinosaurs that we have uh, come from places like Saskatchewan and Alberta. Uh, we've had a number of people contribute to the dinosaur collections here over the years. People like uh, Dale Russell, uh, Juan Langston, um, Joseph Tyrrell, um, but probably the biggest uh, contributors to the dinosaur collections was the Sternberg family of fossil hunters. Back in the 1910s, the um, American Museum of Natural History uh, under, under uh, Barnum Brown began collecting in the Badlands of Alberta and he was bringing his fossils that he collected back to New York. And uh, the Canadian government wasn't too pleased with that. And so they decided to hire an, an American family named uh, the Sternbergs uh, to collect on behalf of Ottawa and, and compete with Barnum Brown in the uh, Badlands of Alberta. And they collected for the museum as a family together in the 1910s. And then they, they disbanded following uh, the First World War and the middle son, uh, Charlie M. Sternberg, uh, stayed on here collecting up until the 1950s. Uh, the Sternbergs collected the bulk of the specimens that we have here in the museum. Some of the best specimens that we have here were collected by the Sternbergs, like, like this uh, Centrosaurus skull that I have behind me. Uh, so when the Sternbergs were hunting for fossils, uh, they didn't just go dig randomly in the Badlands, and, and we don't either today. Um, specifically, we, we walk along the Badlands as they did and look out for, for fossils that might be eroding out of the hillside. Uh, the Sternbergs would then um, open the quarry up, they would dig back into that hillside and try and expose as much of the, the skeleton uh, as possible. And when they had that, that sort of floor plan laid out, um, they would undercut the skeleton and wrap the whole thing um, in, in uh, a plaster and burlap jacket. Sometimes it'd be too big, they would have to cut it up into segments. But those jackets would then be carried back to the nearest um, uh, railroad track uh, by horse and buggy, and they'd be loaded onto rail cars and uh, transported back to Ottawa where they would be uh, prepared and mounted for exhibit. So things haven't changed very much uh, in 100 years of, of fossil collecting. The, the way we collect fossils today is very much the same as the way we used to collect them uh, way back when. Even despite the fact that we've got all this technology, the best way to find fossils is still to walk through the Badlands with your nose to the ground. We're driving out to the Badlands of the South Saskatchewan River. We're working in a bone bed of a horned dinosaur called uh, Centrosaurus apertus, which is a species that lived about 75 million years ago in Alberta. And this bone bed contains potentially thousands of individuals. Uh, it extends over an area about two and a half square kilometers. So we're just working in one little pocket of what's called a mega bone bed. The, the river behind me has uh, carved out badlands out of the prairie side over millennia and uh, exposing uh, beds of rock that were deposited during the age of the dinosaurs along an ancient flood plain. So these dinosaurs were living and dying on this plain and their bones remain fossilized to this day. So prospecting is essentially just us paleontologists walking through the badlands looking for uh, layers of rock that we know produce fossils and looking on the ground, getting, getting down on our hands and knees, looking for fossils. And once we find areas where we have fossils coming out of the rock, we'll then dig into that area to see if there's anything more substantial there for us to take back with us. This is a toe bone from a Tyrannosaur. So this would have been at the very end of the toe. And when this animal was alive, it would have had this claw on it that would have been sort of similar to our fingernails, but totally covering it. That's a pretty sweet find, Tom. Oh yeah, couldn't believe it when I saw it. As all of the deposits here are very rich in dinosaur fossils and fossils of other animals that lived alongside the dinosaurs as well. Everything here was laid down uh, in the correct age uh, and it's the right type of environment too for preserving fossils. 
So to determine the age of a geological formation, one needs to uh, examine the chemistry uh, of the sediments themselves. Uh, and quite often it's volcanic ash that is dated. So uh, for this material, there are layers of volcanic ash that run throughout uh, the deposits that have been dated. And we can uh, estimate the age of our finds based on the position of those dated levels. 76 million years ago, this area would have been a swampy coastal floodplain, so there would have been lots of trees, bogs, and of course dinosaurs running about. This is a really good site because there are a lot of bones closely packed together, which means you don't have to dig a whole lot to get a lot of bone out of the ground. So I have a tooth from a Tyrannosaur, which is that T-Rex belongs to, and we have most of the tip, and we can't really tell the age of the animal way to tell the age of the animal is by taking a cross section of the limb bones such as the humerus, the arm bone, or the femur, the leg bone. That's right. And so the bone bed that we're working on here I think is going to tell us a lot about the what's called a herd assemblage. So all of these animals that were living together they died en masse so we have hundreds of animals all together and by looking at all of these animals preserved we can see what the herd was like when these animals were living. This I think will all come out. I don't know how much will be pushing yeah. this back, but hopefully. Well, let's let's. I say let's get as much of this stuff out this year first, and we can push it back. So we can start over here at, at this end. We're seeing a, a post that we have uh, inserted into the ground here. This is our our datum point or our reference stake. So that's put in at a location that we know. We've recorded its exact location, and we know it, its elevation as well, the height above all the surrounding material. So we use that to anchor all of the basic measurements that we take in the bone bed, particularly recording depths of uh, all of the various elements or bones that are in the bone bed from that reference point so that uh, as we construct a map of this, we'll be able to create the uh, spatial relationships accurately. So what you're seeing here in front of me is uh, just a small section that we've exposed of uh, this larger bone bed, which continues off into the cliff that's in front of me. It is a jumble of bones. It's quite a dense jumble of bones. So in just this small area, I've already uh, marked 80 individual uh, bones that we've uncovered. And there are probably more that we aren't seeing in these blocks lying underneath. But I, I have a good feeling that we can probably get most of this out this year. Like we're on day two here. We're already pulling jackets out, so. Yes, and we have a bit more familiarity with this from working it last year. Yep. So I don't think it will be a problem to remove all of this this season. That would, and that would be a successful season for my Yep. We just finished plastering this jacket. So we're just getting it ready to move so that uh, when we slide the fossil out, it's not gonna, hopefully not gonna fall apart on us. Although the fossils can come back to us here at the museum where we can prepare them and study them and even display them for, for a limited amount of time, ultimately the fossils that we collect in Alberta belong to the province and so ultimately those fossils go back to the province. So I'm, I'm standing here right now in the, the dinosaur collections and specifically the unopened uh, field jacket area. We have probably about 200 or so uh, unopened field jackets here that contain uh, dinosaur skeletons and other skeletons of other fossil vertebrates. Um, so hopefully uh, we'll soon have uh, uh, the time and the person power to actually prepare these fossils. Paleontology is important for a lot of reasons. Uh, number one, it's just cool. You know, that's what that's what keeps me interested is just the raw excitement of working on, on, on fossils. But it's important for, for other uh, more objective reasons as well. Uh, for one, it's really our only way of understanding life on Earth prehistory, uh, prior to the written record. So by studying the fossil record, we can study what animals were here before we ever evolved. Only by studying the fossil record did we learn about um, mass extinctions. And uh, there's a lot of talk nowadays with, you know, habitat loss and climate change that, that we're losing species 
uh, at an alarming rate today. So by studying the fossil record, we can learn about how species adapt and uh, evolve following uh, a mass extinction. So by studying the fossil record, we can learn not only about where we came from, but also where we're going. Thank you.